Hey gamers, today we're gonna look at Ghost for Sale. Let's check it out. Now before I start on setup, let me just tell you that the rule book is a little iffy at times here on the rules. And so this review is probably 80% right, maybe even 95, I don't know. But there's just a few rules that the rule book is just very unclear about. So I'm gonna give my best interpretation of these rules and when I can, I'll tell you where my opinion of the game should go and what the rules actually state. But first off, let me just say, you're gonna put all these manners out here in alphabetical order, A through F. You're going to have your uh, stack of castle cards over here for the second round. And additionally, if you wanna play with this module, this is eight more cards that you'll just play above each one of these manners that give you uh, basically special conditions on each one of these manners, and some of them, there's eight of them because there's six of here, there are two in the deck that you can take out and use later on in the game. So if that happens in the first round, you'll at least have six more for the second round for castles. And again, this is just an extra module. Uh, the rule book tells you what each one of these does, and that is very clear. Every player is going to start with a deck of bidding cards their own player card, plus a player token if they're really stupid and they don't know what color they are. They have uh, tokens of, uh, they, of two of double-sided frames, two of the double-sided ghost tokens, and three of them with, marked with a D that are ghost or frames there. And then they're also gonna start with a true and false card and from the back they look virtually the same. You also have Mrs. True Light somewhere out on the board and then you are ready to play. Each player is going to first off pick a true or false card. They're going to take the one that they don't choose and put it in a di community discard pile with everyone else and then keep this one in front of them face down, which only they will know. After that, in player order, everyone's going to be putting out their tokens eat on either side they want to out on any of these manners. They can put more than one out there if they do. So when all the players have finished putting out uh, their tokens wherever they want to, then the game will go into its first uh, bidding auction, which is bidding for True Light. Now True Light you can take um, over to the side, I guess, and start bidding for her. The game tells you to take out four cards from your deck and says that, hey, take four cards out that you can use in the second round. I don't know if you're just using these four cards or if you're putting the four cards back in your deck, which what was the purpose of that? Because why wouldn't you put the lowest cards out of your deck? You wouldn't need those. You want the biggest cards left. So that makes no sense. So we put all the cards in one deck and use them that way. Anyway, as, a, uh, as the bidding goes around, starting with the first player and moving around, everyone's gonna be putting one or two cards. Let's say green put two cards on this and then yellow put two cards on it. Red put one on it, I put one other, and you keep going until someone runs out of cards, which probably shouldn't happen for True Light, and, uh, or most likely everyone passes. Now once everyone passes, you're gonna start flipping these cards over to see who won the bet. So there's nine for white, 16 cards for green, yellow gave us 14, they came close, red nowhere close to, and then we got an additional eight. So it looks like yeah, it looks like white player one. Now let's say that this was an eight as well and that white and uh, green had tied. Well, in that case, you'll see who played the highest value card out of, any, uh, out of those two. And if they're both tied, then whoever played the card to the, mo to the leftmost side would win. So whoever played that highest card first would win. That's how you determine ties. And you've got to break ties in this game because whoever wins true light, and in this case it was white player, they will check the true or false card of green player who won second place. And then green player would check yellow who won third place. And yellow would check red who won fourth place. Red would get to check no one. Now in addition to that, since white won, they can also check either yellow or red's uh, true or false card as well. And remember, in this game, information is power. Are people lying about these chits out here? Are they telling the truth? You know yours, and this will enable you to know a little bit more before you're placing your bets over in these manners. Now, uh, whoever won it, everyone's cards that were bid and used that round for Miss True Light, they are out of the round. You'll get them at the beginning of the next round, and then you will move on. But the number one player, again, they know two different, uh, two different players and what their true or false cards are. Now, in a three-player game, the rulebook says you do the same exact thing. Like, first player would check second player, second player would check third player. But then it says first player may also check another player. Well, that'd be third, and that would give them 100% knowledge on how much each manner's worth. That's too much, that's too powerful. We do not play with that rule, but that rule is in the rule book. All right, so after this, 
you again will start playing your playing out your bidding cards one or two at a time, mainly face down, unless you're playing with this module, because one of these betting pools will make your make you play your cards face up. And then you keep going until you run out of cards or if every player's pass. And then after that happens, everyone is going to reveal true or false. And this is where you're going to be, like let's say green was lying. If they were lying, then this ghost now turns into a frame because there was no ghost there. Or if they were lying, this ghost over here, since it's double-sided ghost, it gets removed from that manner. Or if they were lying, and this is where the rule book's shoddy, if they were lying, then this double-sided frame turns into a what? should be a ghost. So I'm guessing you would take one of your previous ghost tokens you placed and replace it with a frame. At least that's what we do. Because if you're only you're lying about all of them or telling the truth about all of them, then it's, not, it's not vice versa. So when these go away, these would be switched out with the frame. Again, the rule book is not very clear on that, but that's how we play it. So then you'll be able to determine how many ghosts are in each manner. And remember, this is after the bids, because you're going to resol be resolving those bids, and we just put the cards up here at the top here, uh, the same way which we resolved that bid for true light, meaning whoever has the most money would win that card. Whoever, uh, if there's a tie, again, whoever played the highest value card would win. And if there's still a tie, whoever played it to the leftmost or closest to the manor would win. From there, <clears throat> you're going to determine how many ghosts are in each one. So as you see here, if there's one ghost here, it's worth two victory points. Two ghosts here, it's worth three victory points. Three or four, it's worth zero victory points. Now, there are little, in the actual module, there are cards in the deck that will let you subtract a ghost from that place once you win it. So instead of three, it now has two. Or maybe add a ghost. Maybe it has zero. Well, now I'll pick has one, so I'll at least make it worth two. There's even a card in the deck here that says, hey, any zero manner that you get, you can count it for one victory point if you want to, too. So again, that playing with extra module is really good. But you're going to be deciding, and everyone's different. You look at this manner, it gives you different points depending on how many are there. This one at the end, it gives you the most points to have the most ghosts in it, but only, only zero points or two if it only has two ghosts in it. So they're all different values here. You're going to turn over the bids, get that value card, and then you're going to flip it over and place it right in front of you with the value of whatever you want it for facing you. So that'll tell you how many points you won. After that, you'll take back all your tokens, take back all your bidding cards, t t deal out the castle cards from A to F, just like the manor cards, and uh, these have different values too. Some of them can go up. So for this one, look, two goes would be five. Oh, three goes is back to two. Uh, so they're all a little bit different there. You'll put those out. Again, pick a true, everyone will pick a true or false card, put their tokens out, bid for Miss True Light again, and then bid for each one of the castles before resolving the castle, find out the truth between how many ghosts are in each castle, and then reveal each one of the bets. And at the end of the game, every player is going to add up all their victory points, any additional victory points, there's not that many, but there's a few you could get from this deck, and if there is a tie, then whichever player has the most bet cards still left in their hand. So in the second round, you don't want to bid all, all your cards there. If you have any left in your hand, you will win ties if you have the most uh, bid cards or bid value in your hand. And whoever that player is wins the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, again, those rules are about, I'd say about 85, 86%. Can I be precise here? Um, the rule book is not written very well. In fact, a lot of times it says, look at the back of the uh, box to see an example. What? And like I said, I, I had my nephew read it, I had some other people in my game group read it, and this is just the best way we could play this game. That's not to say this is a bad game. This comes from one of my favorite designers, uh, Virginia Gigli, and that's why I got it in the first place, not because I was attracted to it. In fact, the artwork and everything, I was like, this game does not look like it's for me, but because I love my, this is my favorite designer, I'll get it. And I was shocked, I tell you, shocked! at how much strategy is in this game. Because yes, seems simple bidding. And True Light, at first I thought, you don't need to get her. You're wasting your money bidding on her. Because that, that limits the amount of cards you can play and getting the manors or the castles. No, True Light's probably the most important one that you will win because it gives you, the more knowledge you have, the better idea you have statistically of what each value of the manor is. But you don't want to give too many cards away. And in fact, I think during our second game, Someone almost ran out of cards playing on True Light. And they had knowledge, but they could only put all their cards on one of their safest bets in the manor. And I think they even got outbid too. So you gotta get you don't want to get too caught up in True Light, but you do want to win, win her because that gives you the most knowledge. And you can definitely, you know, it depends on you know, how many players you're playing, but <clears throat> you can definitely get some of the manners and know exactly how much they're worth. And that knowledge is priceless in the game. 
Uh, also, playing with the extra module with the different uh, ab abilities by being able to add a ghost or subtract a ghost or guess how many ghosts are there, that's great because those two victory points or those family portrait one where you can place it on top of one of your zeros and make it a one, even one point makes a big difference. One of the times we played here, we had a tie because you can have ties because there's limited points in the game, very low points in the game you can get. And so we had a tie and someone just kept his number one card because he thought eh, this won't help me win any bids, so he, did, he just passed. Well, because there was a tie, he won because he had a card left in his hand and the other player did not. So now in the second round, you're thinking, okay, how many cards can I play? Because it's looking pretty close between the two of us. I better hold back a card. But I want it to be a mid card, not a high card. I'll spin that, but a mid card because that way I can beat this person. Well, a five, a five should beat this person, but I need to use this five for this. Ooh! Unbelievable strategy in this. Unbelievable strategy in this. Things to think about. It is a simple bidding game. I like the true and false thing to it. First, I didn't understand really well, the whole deal of it. But yes, really smart. I should never doubt Virginia Jiggly before because, I mean, again, very simple, very small game. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. And again, if I got anything wrong in the rule book, I won't know because that rule book, pretty bad. But it's not the rule book's fault. I think this is just one of the earlier games and they just didn't get a good translator or they got someone who was very poor at explaining how the game plays. So hopefully this will help you because I know I'm the only person with a video review of this. So hopefully you'll like it. I love it. And it's cheap too. All right, folks. That's it for now. Till next time. You know what to do. Game on!